Hi, everyone. I'm back. I'm feeling this nervousness coming up, so I just want to <laughs> need to say that. Sometimes it can just help to help to expose it. <sighs> yeah, it's funny because a few days ago I was like just really in prayer around what what the topic was going to be for the show. And I was actually back and forth in my mind, even if I wanted to even do the show today. And so what came in was initially was this idea of time. I, oh, I thought I'll do the, the, that would be the focus of the show. And then it turns out that wasn't it. It came in later that felt, felt much more obvious to me that, yeah, that I wanted to talk about entanglement. And, and then again, when that, when I saw that, it was more like, oh, but I didn't, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> so, so I feel like all week, like a little bit by bit, the spirit has been feeding me little pieces of what, what I'm supposed to talk about today. So, so yeah, I think at, at this stage, maybe I'll just, just start by saying, um, because I do have a clip that I want to show in a minute, but it really goes over, you know, you could say the, what the quantum physicists have found um, about what entanglement is, which is this discovery of what's happening in this kind of microscopic, subatomic level of the universe that shows, um, yeah, basically shows what, what, what entanglement is. So maybe we'll, I think we'll just start with the clip and, and we'll take it from there. So Nicholas, if you want to, you want to let it roll. Oh, and by the way, this is from, um, this is from the movie, What, what the Bleep? It's Dr. Quantum. So it's nice, nicely animated for, I think, for ease of, of you know, reception in, in a certain way. So. Um, yeah, so he doesn't, he doesn't go into a lot of the science or anything behind that, but the, like there, there's a part of actually what he said, Dr. Quantum was, is actually really baffling to the intellect. We can't really understand it at all because there's no real laws of the universe that explain it. So it, in a certain way, you have to like, you have to kind of um, look at this and, and trust that if you can't grapple it with your intellect that's okay <laughs> that that just this idea that that particles can be linked like instantaneously um no matter how far apart they are so they don't they're not subject to the rules of you know how long it would take for communication to happen from one to another they don't they don't care they're actually totally outside of the system in a way they they just kind of act in these ways like this that that really you know throw everything up into you know everything is up now for for question really um, because if things can can do that then you know obviously we're extremely wrong about what we think is going on <laughs> so and I think I I really love that about about this because I I spent so many years in science and using Newtonian science as my way to know something and I just really that was my like my my religion in a way like that was my way to understand the world understand myself understand it all and that when when this started to come in and enter my awareness so to speak it was like was you know like it was, it's telling me that that I had it all wrong and that, you know, which is an assault to the, to the ego, <laughs> but, but in a way it's, it's really refreshing because it's, it's sort of started to open my mind to something, something much different. So, so yeah. And then actually after I, I, I felt good about this clip and showing it, I was looking through some other, just online one night, just a few days ago, and I was looking through some clips and some articles and I landed on this experiment that was done just a few years ago and it was also an entanglement experiment and what they found was not only can can this sort of thing happen across space but 
It can also happen with time. In other words, they were able to entangle particles that were separated in time, you know, so they had different, you could say, points in time, and they were totally connected. They were completely outside of the rules of time. But also, they were doing it with particles that didn't even coexist in time. <laughs> like, in other words, it was like, you know, I don't know how to, a meta, uh, um, another way of putting it is if I'm deeply connected with someone who isn't even, who I, who ha, who I have no overlap in this lifetime with. And so, so it really shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be possible at all. It, it, according to what we believe is true. And so, so yeah, I was blown, I was blown away by that. And then I, yeah, I was, I was also really in prayer about wanting the spirit to show me what this all means, like in, in the spiritual journey. So, and I, I, like I wanted an experience of it. I wanted to really feel in my heart like I, I understood something about what this meant. I didn't want it to just be about experiments. And so last night we had, Ken had mentioned, was it Ken? Yeah, I mentioned earlier that there was a movie gathering we had last night. And I was sitting watching this movie. And um, what happened during the movie was was really actually interesting because there was different sharings that like David had shared some and then Jason had shared some about their experience with their father um, or their grandfather in their, in their lifetime and just some healing work that, that was happening, some forgiveness work that was happening. In their lifetime. And I was feeling kind of bad because I had this feeling that I had more forgiveness work to do with my father who had passed away two years ago. And I thought, oh, maybe it's, you know, water under the bridge. Maybe there's nothing more I can do. And then during the gathering, I, at one point after Jason actually shared some healing experience with his father, I felt this rush of, of love coming from my, what, what I thought <laughs> was like my father. Thank you. <laughs> And it just felt really strong, like it was him. And then, and then it actually felt even bigger than that. Like it felt like I was being shown these ways that he had been kind of loving me and loving me and loving me, but I didn't necessarily see it that way at the time. But that the love was, was always there, you know, like that, that was the message was that it didn't go away. Now I keep talking here, but back to, <laughs> I don't know how to feel. It felt really like obvious to me afterwards, after the, sh the, the, the movie talk and after this upwell of emotion that the spirit was just trying to show me something about this entanglement business that, that, that entanglement is talking about basically a collapse of time and a collapse of space that that when there's forgiveness it's just the it's like it's just the love or something that's that's left there it's, it's just a perception that there was a separation it was like um like a trick or something and that yeah the experience that i had was like just showing me in a, in a deeper way that no you, that love actually never went away it never, it didn't actually go away, even if you thought it did. You, you were just covering it over with some kind of a story, you know, to convince you you're, I don't know what, separate, different roles, different people. I don't, like a, a lot of stories <laughs> there. And so, and so that was really the experience I was, I was looking for. That was, that was the, 
somehow the, the deeper message for me was, was that. And so, yeah, and so I just wanted to, I wanted to share that, but I also, there was also just this recognition that, that you know, I don't want to overuse the word, but this, this idea of ta- entanglement is kind of always there. Like it's, it's always this, the spirit is, is kind of frequently showing me that there isn't the separation that I think there is, that, you know, that things just seem to happen and they don't make any sense. Like, you know, I'll have someone in my mind and then boom, someone else will, will come in and mention them. And it's just at, in that moment, like it actually happened this morning. And I, and then the, when that happened, it was more like, oh, that's really cool. But it also seemed to fit with, you know, it was, it was practical. Like it was like, you know, it was, it helped, you know, with some decision-making that needed to happen really quickly this morning. And, you know, so it was like the spirit was using that in a way that, that felt really, that really felt really helpful. And yeah. And I, yeah, I also feel like because my mind has, has always been so scientific and in that logical kind of way, I felt, I feel like the spirit is often brought in symbols for me that, that showed me this illusion of separation. You could say that, um, that I've needed a lot of persuading and, and the, one of the examples that just came to mind was with a cat that I used to have um, named Hazel. And Hazel was really cool because what she would do is she would pre- kept predicting over and over my next step. Like, so I'd be in the kitchen and I would go to do something and I'd look and Hazel would just be sitting there waiting before I did it. So, and then it would just keep happening over and over again. And it was almost like, and I just kept like, what the heck? Like, it just didn't make any sense. And I just kept seeing how, oh, like, there's something, there's something way, way bigger going on here that I can't make any sense of. And, and maybe I don't need to make any sense of it. So, so yeah. Um, Yeah, and then I, I also was um, was looking at. Well, I do have a, actually another another clip that I wanted to show, um, that was basically right right in line with this that we've been talking about. You know, just how the Holy Spirit really wants to keep persuading and persuading us in all these different subtle ways that there isn't this this illusion. Sorry. There is, stepping back that there isn't this this you know fragmentation or this this perception of separation that we we think there is that we we're very convinced that there is um but to the logical mind it it's like i said it's very persuasive and so so there there is a lot of there is a lot of like you know um there's a lot of steps that, that need to happen in terms of guidance to be brought in to, to be shown just how, again, how wrong, wrong we are about what we think is going on. So, um, so I'm, when I was looking at it this morning, and this was from A Course in Miracles, <laughs> There was, yeah, there's a section here in under the power of holiness um, in chapter 16 that says, there is a tendency to fragment and then to be concerned about the truth of just a little part of the whole. And this is but a way of avoiding or looking away from the whole. So what you think you might be better able to understand or yeah, to what you think you might be better, better able to understand. For this is but another way in which you would still try to keep understanding to yourself. And then, and then Jesus brings miracles into it <laughs> because it's really through the miracle that we're able to experience this collapse of, of time 
and see beyond the veil, as it were, of perception to experience the truth behind the image of, of what we think is real. So a, far and, a better and far more helpful way to think about miracles is this. You do not understand them either in part or in whole, yet they have been done through you. Therefore, your understanding cannot be necessary, yet it is still impossible to accomplish what you would un not understand. And so there must be something in you that does understand. Hmm. Yeah, so... So maybe just going with that and just sort of this invitation again to, to be okay with not understanding, not understanding what miracles are and not even understanding what any of what this quantum physics stuff, how it really works, um, that it's okay. It's, it's, there's, it's almost like a, a, a degree of faith is needed because these were discoveries, these are discoveries in science and I feel like when I look at this stuff that I just keep needing to be okay with not understanding, understanding it all. So, so yeah, I think I'll, maybe I'll, I'll bring in the clip first. I'll, I'll set it up a little bit. This was taken from um, a movie that came out a number of years ago called Waking Life. And um, it basically is a, it's a movie about this, this young man who um, keeps um, waking up into what he thinks is, is his life, you know, but it turns out he finds out along the way that he's still dreaming. So he would go back to bed and then he would wake up again and he, he would be back at it. He would be back into what he realizes is a, is a dream and, and that um, part of his exploration in, in the movie is going around and just talking to people and trying to understand how he can wake up for good because he wants to wake up and he's tired of this kind of cycling around of, of waking up into what is, is just a dream. So, so this is kind of a famous scene um, that, that we'll play and it gonna, it's going to just um, talk more about how, you know, you know, how this business of time is, is not what we think it is, and that, you know, hearkening back to the, the concept of entanglement, just how entangled things might really be, you know, at that basic, basic level. So, yeah, if Nicholas, you want to go ahead and, and play that. Yeah, I just, I realized I stopped it just slightly too soon there. What, what he goes on to say was, was that um, this is the narrative of everyone's life, that everyone is just constantly saying no to, to, the, to the truth out of fear. And, but the truth is always there. The, the kingdom of heaven is always at hand. So um, we say no until we're ready to say yes. This is how that, how that finished. So, so yeah, I, I felt like that brought back to mind just cop, Captain Doctor, sorry, Doctor Quantum, and what he was talking about at the beginning—that time and space were just an illusion. In kind of in the face of everything um, being entangled, <laughs> and basically one, that underlying oneness that, um, that is behind the, the image of, of separation or the image of, of somehow it appears so real. And um, when I was looking at all of that, I, I just felt like, well, um, where does the whole Course in Miracles, um, yeah, where does the whole Course in Miracles tie, tie into this? And 
So I picked up the course again, and there was another section that that I just wanted to read from that felt really felt really appropriate under changeless reality. In chapter 30, uh, appearances deceive but can be changed. Reality is changeless. It does not deceive at all. And if you fail to see beyond appearances, you are deceived. For everything you see will change, and yet you thought it real before, and now you think it real again. Reality is thus reduced in form and capable of change. Reality is changeless and is this that makes it real and keeps it separate from all appearances. It must transcend all form to be itself. It cannot change. Yeah, so I feel like that that's kind of where, where it ended up for me at the end of it was just being shown that any experience of, of a miracle or of a, of a real shift in perception that shows me that I've just been so wrong about what I thought was real is pointing back over and over again to this, this changeless reality, you could say, that's, that's behind everything. And, and so, so, yeah, I feel like that's, that's just where, where I wanted to end, end the show today. So, so thank you, everyone, for, <laughs> for joining in.